So, hi, uh, Mark back with part two on the AE module. In this case, what we're going to do is have a little bit of a play with the uh, interaction with other devices. Um, so, I've already demonstrated it can work with MIDI, um, but let's also have a look at other things like external audio. So, this is just an internal patch. Now what we're going to try to do is, rather than actually take this from an oscillator, we're going to actually take the input from Bustle Castle. So we've just plugged this into the audio input here, and we can turn on the Bustle Castle. Um, and now we can just literally take this from the other input. These work as input and output. a 0 5 volt system like this, probably a bit less in fairness, we can actually use this directly. So we can actually connect things directly here. So that's the audio output directly. But we can also use it to control. So for example, if I take an internal oscillator, we can actually also use this to drive from the other, so we can use it as control voltage, or for example, as a step sequencer. So it's very easy to do it. Now, you can also do this with um, Eurac um, as well, because it actually supports uh, control voltage here. Uh, one point I'll make, if you're going to do this, you need to have a common you need to have a common ground between your device and the A modular. Now the way I achieve that is actually by connecting any output uh, into the master module here. That actually gives me a common ground to start with. Um, but let me show you also CV. The way the CV works is quite straightforward. Um, let me put it in here. For the castle to get CV after you go into the I.O. port here. Um, and then what we do is we actually um, in the basket castle, we take, uh, for example, a control voltage like the LFO into this IO port here, and we then uh, have a signal in the control. So if we turn up this now, we there's a control one and two here, uh, which we can then put to. The significance of that, as I say, with a castle, you can just go directly, um, as you can with things like bit ranges and stuff like that. Um, there's actually quite a few zero five 5 volts. You've got mini sizes, uh, bars of castles, all sorts of uh, the nano synth, etc. So there's quite a lot of different things that you could now connect up to the AE module that are very cheap, um, but also just extend it, like the bars of castles got a very interesting oscillator. Okay, so the final thing I want to show you is how you can actually extend a modular uh, very cheaply um, with a bit of electronic skills. And this is what I actually quite enjoy because um, I know that I can play with it and not blow it up. And if I do, it's not that expensive. So again, what I've done here is I've got a OM synth by Bastl. Um, this is actually just a prototyping board. You could do this with breadboards, etc., as well. Um, I've connected um, a cable here. I'm not actually using the signal. Again, I'm just using it to give it a common ground. I've actually got two things here on the circuit. I've got um, a very simple uh, oscillator, um, which I'm actually going to use as an LFO, and I've also got um, a step sequencer, an analog sequencer um, as well, which we're going to play with. Um, 
both are basically only a couple of chips like all breadboards it looks like a complete mess and very difficult but it's actually very straightforward um, and will cost you peanuts to do so the first thing i'm going to do is um, introduce the lfo and we, again we just literally take the output from this schmidt trigger here pass it into here um, and i've actually connected it up to a potential to to the frequency of it. This is a pence. To, I mean, it costs you absolutely nothing. Obviously, we could then mount it properly into uh, the board. Um, what I've also got here is a little um, sequencer. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to initially drive the sequencer from that LFO uh, directly. And this is the output of the sequencer. So if I have the puts in here, we should. So that's quite fun. I mean, again, just literally two chips. This is a a counter uh, and a mute, um, multiplexer. Very simple to wire up, just connected directly to some pots so I can get different values. Um, and then what's also interesting is, of course, this is bidirectional. So I can actually, rather than actually drive it from the oscillator here, okay, what I could do instead is actually take this part here running very fast at the moment, <laughs> but it's actually driving it off uh, an LFO here. So now what's actually happening is it's this sequencer is now being driven off of this LFO. So we've got bidirection. We've got the ability to be able to send sound, obviously, into the A modular. We've also got the ability to send control voltages into the A modular, um, either generated from a simple circuit or something like a castle. And we can also control as well things by going this way. Um, we could do the same thing actually with a basketball castle. I could actually take, for example, an LFO and drive, for example, the modulation on here. So it's quite a lot of fun with the castle because I found it a bit limited because there's no uh, envelopes. But of course, with the AE modular, I can introduce envelopes. Anyway, I hope this uh, shows you some of the things it can do. Um, I mean, I've not touched everything. Um, I mean, we've got obviously beat uh, clock divider down here and a sequencer here as well. Um, but I thought it would just give a bit of a flavor. Um, and I'll no doubt be doing other videos as well as I get to know it. This is, I've only had it a day, so I'm still rather limited. Thank you, I hope you enjoyed.